In order to destroy the false narratives surrounding the establishment's disastrous response to COVID, we need to marshal not only facts, but stories as well. The facts are on our side, but facts speak to logic and we are not rational. To really change people's minds, we need to move their hearts and this is done through stories. As a companion piece to his excellent book, Diary of a Psychosis, Tom Woods has compiled the stories of individuals and how they were affected by the authoritarian policies of the COVID regime. Wise leaders should always consider the long-term consequences of their actions, not just the short term. They should consider the unseen consequences as well as the seen. These stories are the unseen consequences of our leaders' actions, leaders who exercised great power but were never wise. These stories need to be told far and wide so that the nightmare we all experienced during the COVID regime is never experienced again. The first story is from C.J. Kilmer, who runs the Dangerous History podcast. This is his story. The Covidian regime caused severe damage to my mental health and some to my physical health as well. I've battled clinical depression since childhood. No adult ever thought to get me to a therapist or anything like that. Instead, I self-medicated with overeating and spent most of my life obese, often morbidly so. In 2019, thanks to gastric bypass and a ton of hard work, I lost over 120 pounds and got my physical and mental health into their best state in my entire life. Then 2020 and the COVID madness hit. I was able to maintain my physical and mental health pretty well for the first several months, but it started eating away at it incrementally. The forcible closing of so many things that had given me happiness and that I had used for healthy self-medication, like doing martial arts, going to the gym, and even hiking in nearby parks and nature preserves damaged me. The way that my job changed, I am a history teacher, was even worse. Even though I'm in Florida, which meant that the general lockdown policies for stores and restaurants didn't last for very long, colleges were allowed to set their own COVID rules for quite a while, and so my workday continued to be governed by spring 2020 rules well into 2021. Nearly everything I disliked about my job got accelerated and amped up exponentially. We did almost an entire school year all online and then started having in-person classes under such restrictive Covidian rules that teaching in person, which was the favorite part of my job and why I went into teaching in the first place, was now even more miserable than teaching online. My days became a more miserable version of Groundhog Day. My depression was stoked to its worst state of my adult life and maybe its worst state in my entire life. I felt like I had no control over my situation and no hope. I also continued to have less in-person social contact and interaction than before. All of this, of course, is exactly what you would do if you were deliberately trying to aggravate someone's depression. I'd never previously been a problem drinker, but I gradually became one sometime between the spring of 202 and the spring or summer of 2021. Because I could no longer self-medicate with many of the healthy things I'd been doing in 2019 and because I could no longer self-medicate with overeating due to the gastric bypass, I gradually started consuming more alcoholic drinks per night and more nights per week until I got to where I was getting seriously drunk at least four or five nights a week and often more than that. This only spiralled my depression further downward and this all put a large strain on my marriage and family and it hobbled my productivity on the Dangerous History podcast. I never became suicidal but I came close enough to scare myself. My marriage got pretty close to the brink a couple of times as well though we stay together and things are on the mend, especially lately. My finances also took a hit due to all of the fallout of this and will take a lot of work and time to fix. I left my teaching job in the summer of 2022 thanks to a successful Indiegogo campaign, and thanks to all of you for helping me on that, by the way. At that time, though, I was still in denial to a large extent as to the severity of my alcoholism and depression. I believed that a lot of my day-to-day -day misery was being caused by how much I had come to hate my job, but I didn't realize the depths of the damage my mental health had taken 
and the ways that would hobble my productivity and so I wasn't psychologically healthy enough to meet the challenge of doing the Dangerous History podcast full-time and well as I needed to. And for the first six months after I left my job, I was drinking as much as before, if not more. I would try and cut back or quit for a while, but it would rarely last more than a few days. I think the longest I ever went without getting drunk during this time was around two weeks, and I only managed that once or twice. Thankfully, I was able to quit drinking entirely in February of this year with the help of family, friends and mental health professionals. I recently celebrated six months of sobriety, as you may have seen me posting about on social media recently. I think I'm doing pretty well with recovering from alcoholism for someone who's only been sober for six months. I still have a long road ahead with battling depression, which I believe was the root cause of the drinking, but I think I've been making progress there too, especially recently. The fact of the matter is, as of late 2019 and early 2020, I was on a positive upward path. I was still working on myself in many ways, but my day-to-day -day life was pretty good and generally getting better week to week and month to month. The COVID regime completely reversed that and thanks to how long the madness lasted, it put me into possibly the worst state of mind I've ever been in. I already despise the psychopaths who rule us, but this experience has made me burn with anger against them. Previously, I'd never been personally injured by their evil behavior other than having to pay for it through taxes and inflation, but their actions nearly cost me everything and I'd done absolutely nothing to deserve this. I know that countless millions of people were casualties of this in similar ways to me and that many suffered worse. I at least managed to get through it still alive and still married to my wife, but I know many people who did not. That is CJ's story. I've provided a link to his podcast in the description as well as links to Tom's book and my own free ebook as well. If you wish to learn more about the origins of the COVID panic so that we can ensure that it never happens again, click on the subscribe button as well as I will be making more videos that analyze this topic from different angles. There were many snowflakes of stupidity that went into the avalanche of idiocy that we all experienced and I intend to cover them all. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.